um, it's, it's always especially uh, satisfying for me to be able to do this, if only because for most of my career at Ryerson, I was a program director in the, arts, in the area of arts, which meant the social sciences and the humanities never had quite the opportunity to work with programming that had such a direct impact on individuals and indeed on a, such a direct in, impact on the economy. So it's a special pleasure for me to be here today in my capacity as the director of Gateway Programs, but also the senior program director to say it's just immensely satisfying and rewarding to see such a, a wonderful turnout. And I'm sure you're going to have a very productive afternoon. So thank you very much. I'm very privileged this afternoon to have uh, some uh, HR practitioners, practitioners and uh, those in charge of hiring in the engineering sector. They've taken time out to uh, give you some very practical advice on what they're looking for in the, in the marketplace. Uh, they're actually operating under current, current government policies, current economic conditions. It doesn't get any more real than this. They're recruiting people to work now in the current engineering environment. However, to look at it on our level, and as engineers looking to find a position or a project to, or a company to work for in Canada, um, I must know the law of the land. I know people who immigrated, like me, to, came to Canada, they didn't know what the law is and they don't know what the disciplines are. And they didn't, they didn't have a clue as what is the requirement of the interior building code or the electrical code or any other codes. Now, nobody is expected you should know all of this when you land in. But what's important is if you spend the time and make the investment in learning about all of these things, it is very essential for your career. That's, that's what uh, comment raises a very good point. And uh, the only thing I want to add is that there, there are quite a few codes and standards. I mean, standards alone, we're talking thousands of standards. So um, one important thing is to really understand the field you're trying to get into. So not to take a shotgun approach and, and, and try to just be everything to everyone. It's to focus in on, on where your true love is in terms of, of your field and say, okay, well, if I'm going to be a, I want to design product, electrical product, then there are very specific standards, for example, that are about the development of certain products. Uh, the electrical code, there's there's what's called part two standards for specific types of products, whether it's medical products or appliances or tools. So uh, I would say make sure you do the necessary research and learn those specific standards going, uh, walking into an interview or, or, or applying for a job. I would just add the systems and tools. So that's becoming a key uh, requirement for positions that we hire people for. Uh, particularly because our clients want to see 3D modeling, Primavera, SolidWorks, AutoCAD, and you can learn these things at any institution. Uh, they're even teaching high school students now in Oakville on AutoCAD. So, um, you know, you're just competing with more, with more people that have that training. So, um, again, we can't sell, for us particularly, because we're a consulting company, we can't sell you to our clients unless you have that skill and, and a little bit of experience using that. The best thing I think you need to start doing is, is networking on social media and, uh, and preparing your resume. Um, I read a resume last Friday that was 12 pages long. Way, way too long. <laughs> um, so three page resume, you want to give highlights, um, and you want to start preparing your written and verbal communication. I'm going to ask a question, and, and by raise of hand, tell me, how many of you buy lottery tickets? How many of you won a million dollars? However, you do buy the ticket. No, no guarantee you're going to win. And same thing in looking for a job. You have to do, you have to work very hard, and you really have to do your homework. Now, if I'm looking at an individual, and I'm looking to hire somebody, and they send their wonderful resume, as has been told, that what you need to do with respect to the resume. Why should I hire you? You have to stand out. And how you do it? Very simple. Show me 
basically what are you willing to do. In other words, if you are looking for a long-term career, and if you are looking, you have what it takes, say it. Uh, just a point on interviewing skills, I think Diane had mentioned that, preparing properly for an interview. Um, I was in an interview and the question was asked, I never asked the question, I would never ask this question, but the question was asked, what's your greatest weakness? And the mistake was the person answered the question and said, uh, well, sometimes I have trouble meeting uh, deadlines. <laughs> you could have said nothing and that would have been a better answer, right? The answer is I work too hard or geez, I try to do too much. But uh, I mean, it really hones back on the fact that you could have a, the perfect candidate on paper and you would think that this person would do remarkably well and you'd be hiring this person. And then it comes to the interview and the person does horribly in the interview. And you never want to be caught like that. So uh, the preparation, of course, starts with, with putting together the right material with regards to the submission, getting that first interview. But, uh, but don't downplay the fact that that interview is very important. And the way you come across in that interview is going to get you the job or not get you the job. So uh, any preparation that can be done in terms of honing your, your soft skills and interview taking skills are, are very important as well. Be realistic and, uh, and I think within a good uh, time span, uh, uh, you will have... One that Ajwat mentioned that is do your homework and the other one is how do you differentiate yourself and I think it's important for you to think that you each of you have a set of unique skills and instead of trying to go for every job what is what is very important is to focus on trying to find the job that requires your skills. Uh, there's an article in the paper today on the Storm Star on, 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 on people without jobs and jobs without people, and it's because of the, the lack of matching the skills with the needs. So I bet you that out there in the marketplace, there's got to be somebody that needs someone with the skills that you have, and it's just that that person has not been able to find you. But if you are proactive and you do your homework and you look at your skills and figure out who is that person that needs someone like you that's willing to pay for what you have, you'll be successful. Or certainly we are presented with a lot of resumes uh, for unpaid um, placements or interns. And where the disconnect comes for us is that the, the agency that has provided us with the resume um, between, you know, do you have a job, hasn't really taken the time to say what are your needs and, and what are you looking for and then be able to source the individuals that can actually fit. Uh, being in, in, certainly in the business, um, we're not looking to just take anybody. We want to take somebody that we're actually going to be able to provide some knowledge, some you know, ability to transfer their skills, and then eventually, hopeful, or hopefully for us, is give them employment. Elaine, you bring up a, you know, a good point. I, I fully agree with you. And, and, uh, having actually hired uh, unpaid workplaces, I have to say that uh, after going through a couple of examples of that, I, I would now approach it in a way that it, I, I, I am paying that person. And the reason being is that there's a lot of cost involved actually onboarding this person and training this person. Uh, and the cost that's involved in doing that uh, is actually far greater than the amount of money that would have been paid to that person during that placement anyhow. So the, the fact that it's unpaid or paid, it really it, it doesn't have much relevance. Uh, I personally would want to make sure that that is the right person for the job and that that person, there is a real chance that that person uh, could and would stay on with the company following that. What we've been basically doing is when I look at you, the way you're looking at me today, you see me and I see you. I cannot see myself. I would know, go right away, by asking you the right questions about what you know about the services or the engineering discipline I'm interviewing you or I'm hiring you for, how much you know. So don't be afraid to say, I don't know. There isn't one engineer who is perfect. There is shortage of knowledge in every discipline. Yeah, sure. Just be yourself, tell me what you are, look me straight in the eye, and I can read through you. And the rest basically is, it doesn't matter if you, I'm not paying you, or if I'm paying you because I'm looking for long term. 
It's not, uh, it's not uh, I guess, cheating the system or whatnot, but there is a lot of uh, networking in advance of those jobs, and when the jobs are posting, and there is usually, not 100%, but usually there's a very good talent pool waiting for it. Um, so uh, I, would, uh, I would always tell you, proactiveness is the name of the game. Uh, being uh, persistent is the name of the game. I strongly urge you guys uh, to be proactive about it uh, and use all means and practices, whether it's the LinkedIn of the world, uh, or any other methodology of uh, going out there to express. I even tell you that uh, perhaps you should go unsolicited to some of the companies uh, through their website and show your talent. And, uh, and uh, you know, just take a look at the, uh, in the room at all. There are that many people looking. Um, so in order for you to be able to be the candidate, um, I would say that uh, uh, be proactive, uh, be persistent, and uh, as truthful as possible, you do have a lot of qualification. Well, I can say that the, uh, LinkedIn is very powerful, and in our company, our recruiters use LinkedIn. But uh, there are a couple of things that are important. They, they wouldn't look at a profile without a picture, and a picture says a lot of things. So if, if, if you want to work in a resort, or you want to work as a fishing instructor, they put your picture in a boat holding a fish or put a picture of you, you know, in the park or put a picture. If you want a job in an engineer as a project manager, uh, spend the money, get a professional picture in it. Be serious about your profile because it's out there. One of the ways that, you know, agencies can help um, both the newcomer and the company with that all-rounded approach is, is research. I think understanding where the industry is at, understanding where the market is at, reaching out to the employers and saying, you know, this is what we're doing, does, you know, what we're teaching today, does this still fit what you're looking at? Does this still apply? I mean, you know, 10 years ago, maybe we were looking at interviewing styles this way, maybe things have changed. You know, how do you interview in your company? How can, so I, I think all of that has changed so social media has surely changed our business and, and the way we go about doing things. So I think if for agencies to reach out to the employers and saying, you know, what is it you're doing today in your job search to find the ideal candidate and then transferring that back to the people, I think that everybody is more prepared. In terms of uh, program improvements, I think one possible improvement is uh, that uh, the program can actually help establish where skill sets could actually be transferred to adjacent professions. So uh, I'll use an example. I, I, some of you are, are probably engineers from, from uh, outside of Canada. And coming to Canada, there are other professions that are very similar or related to engineering that you could be getting into if really that's where your love is. So uh, what I'm saying is uh, not to be confined to the exact profession that you necessarily trained in. There are opportunities actually to find where else you could actually be playing a role. Uh, I know a couple people in my organization that were trained as engineers outside of Canada that are working in different professions. They're working in sales and marketing, project management, um, and they're working as technologists, and they're very happy doing that. So um, I think that the, if the program can actually help identify where those skills are transferable, I think that the success rate would increase in people looking for employment. looking for, um, seeing as how that seems to be the majority of people, what, what are you looking for in an engineer to provide consulting reports? I'm looking for a few million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> when we, what we're looking for, I'm right now looking for five engineers. Um, I have said it time and again and again. I wanted to know what's in your heart and what is it you're looking for. If what you have close to matching what we need, basically, and you have the, uh, in your heart, you are loyal, you're dedicated, and you're here to stay with us, uh, that's you become basically, I said, 90% of the game. The reason I'm saying this, because it takes us as much as an engineer thinks they know a lot, on the average, it takes us about five years 
uh, to leave that person alone. So therefore, we, we made lots of investment, and it hurt us when after those five years or seven years or 10 years, the individual decided to go someplace else because the grass is greener on the other side. So really, what we, we, we discovered that very quickly. And we'd be able to tell if that individual really is willing to stay. Of course, no guarantees, but at least we have good feeling for it. I'm looking for a few million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> when we, what we're looking for, I, I'm right now looking for five engineers. Um, I have said it time and again and again. I wanted to know what's in your heart and what is it you're looking for. If what you have close to matching what we need, basically, and you have the, uh, in your heart you are loyal, you're dedicated, and you're here to stay with us, uh, that's you become basically, I said, 90% of the game. Thank you very much. I guess my question was for Elaine uh, regarding WMIS training and all of that. I've done WMIS in various job uh, placements. And uh, it's very site-specific, and it has to be renewed for that specific site. So how do you put that on a resume? Because when you get a new job, you're going to have a new women's training. And I think what the point that I was trying to make was that, you know, if the, the job requires that and you have that skill, yes, I know it has to be renewed, and yes, I know it's site-specific, but if that's a requirement, then list that because we would have known that you would have gone through that process. Um, because that, that is, and, and I can only speak that because that is one of several of our construction managers. They look for people that have actually gone through that training. Hello everyone. I hope today's panel discussion was um, a great opportunity to learn from our panelists and hope you, hopefully you can leave a lot of good information to assist you as you go forward in your job search. Um, I'm certain that we are all a little bit more aware of a few things that our city and our region um, have a wealth of talent that has yet to be plugged in, into our economy and that there are various employers and stakeholders who are involved in the growth of our country and are interested in integrating engineers, especially internationally trained engineers, into our economy and are currently working really hard to address some of the challenges and problems that we face whilst creating dialogue. It's important for us to focus on innovation and new ideas and new ways in which we can integrate newcomers into their career paths. And I hope that we all leave today encouraged and invigorated to collaborate and push forward and to continue investing and addressing the gaps in integrating newcomer engineers into the Canadian labor market. So on behalf of Skills for Change, I would like to thank our panelists representing the engineering industry and government. Um, today's discussion is just a mere snapshot of what they do each day. I want to briefly thank uh, our panelists for taking the time, really the valuable time to come and share and give us some advice. I'd like to uh, thank Skill for Change for an excellent work in putting all this together. And I'd like to thank you for investing your time and coming here and for pushing you forward and doing this uh, networking and learning about uh, you, how do you get uh, to the next step in terms of your job. I just want to mention uh, that um, the MLM program, the mid-level manager, is recruiting for the next group in September, so please share the word for your friends, whoever is interested in doing project management bridging uh, program at Ryerson University. So thank you all, and again, a round of applause for our panelists.